Hello, hello, and welcome or welcome back to my channel. So forever and ever and ever ago in an unpopular opinions video, and I actually can't remember what the opinion itself was, but it was based around fan fiction. And I remember bringing up as someone who read fan fiction quite often for quite a long time, I didn't necessarily ever really connect with fan fictions who were about real people. And it is something that I've been thinking about how to turn into a video topic for quite a while now. And with the idea of you having just come out a couple days ago, I was like, ooh, this would be a perfect time to talk about fan fiction about real people. And then not only fan fiction, but stories like the idea of you that maybe don't necessarily fall under that umbrella, but they are still a story that's very much inspired by a person that we all know. Well, know of, or we know who it is. I do not know Harry Styles. Maybe y'all do. Personally, I do not. But regardless, let's go ahead and get into the topic of the video. The Idea of You focuses on Solen, a 40-year-old art gallery owner and single mother, and her role run romance with Hayes, a 24-year-old boy band singer. They meet at Coachella where August Moon is performing, and it's an attraction, banter at first sight kind of thing. And Solen is looking for a rush, a thrill in her life because she had her daughter young, so she sort of missed out on those carefree young adult years. And the movie of course explores their relationship, but also some of the drama, rumors, the media tension that would likely result from a relationship like this, and how it affects Solen's personal life. Anne Hathaway, who plays Solin, said in an interview, It's kind of fun to be in a film where we talk about it, where we don't dance around it, but we actually embrace her point of view on it. The Idea of You is an adaptation of a 2017 novel of the same name written by Robin Lee. In the book, Solin is 39 and Hayes is 20, so the movie narrowed their age gap just a little. This is my husband, Eric Hayes, hence Hayes Campbell. Um, and you know what? We'd had a conversation. And, uh, and, and, and he was the one that planted the seed. I'd, I was joking one evening. We were at a political fundraiser, and I was joking that I'd, I was going to run off and leave him and the kids, and I'm going to run off with a guy in a band who is half my age. And he was like, you're crazy, but that would make a great book. And if this Vogue article about the book is any indication, it really started to pick up steam during lockdown. In their headline, they refer to the idea of you as the sleeper hit of the pandemic, and a romance novel inspired by Harry Styles. Apparently, the book has amassed its own dedicated fandom who call themselves Hey Soul Nuts. The book, of course, provides a sense of fictional fantasy, kind of like a Fifty Shades of Grey, which of course actually was a fan fiction initially, but a Twilight one. That was likely another aspect of escapism that readers latched onto during lockdown. Michelle Ruiz, the author of the Vogue article, who actually became a fan of the book, said it was recommended to her by friends of hers who were actually Harry Styles fans. So in some ways, it seems like the Hayes character being inspired by Harry was a reason for at least some to pick up the book. Robin Lee said about the idea of you, This was never supposed to be a book about Harry Styles. It was supposed to be a story about a woman approaching 40 and reclaiming her sexuality and rediscovering herself just at the point that society traditionally writes women off as desirable and viable and whole. So not necessarily saying the Hayes character wasn't at all inspired by Harry Styles, but that this story is definitely more focused on Solon as a person too. Interestingly enough, Ruiz just wrote an opinion piece on the film, so about four years later, claiming that the Idea of You movie whitewashed some of the more nuanced themes in the book, as well as some of the characters. She said that the source material was undervalued the same way Selene actually says in the book that media meant to appeal to women is often undervalued. Ruiz claimed that while the Idea of You book was a much more complex story than YN falling in love with the Harry Styles adjacent figure, that's what she felt the film version more or less reduced the plot to. And of course, the idea of you has been compared, or at least in conversation with after both its books and its films. These stories indisputably began as Harry Styles fan fiction, originally on Wattpad. And because of their massive popularity, the author Anna Todd got a deal with Simon & Schuster, and the stories were eventually turned into novels. And once they were published, Harry Styles' name was changed to Hart and Scott. And then of course, the novels were turned into a series of movies, with the first one, also called After, coming out in 2019. In the After series, Harry or Harden and the main character Tessa, they're actually in the same age group and they are students at the same college. Can you please go out into the hall so I can get dressed? Don't flatter yourself. I'm not looking. Harden is this tortured British bad boy with tattoos, of course, and he's basically several toxic fanfic tropes just rolled into one character. And Tessa, of course, is that bookish good girl who's kind of different from the other girls who's inexplicably drawn to Harden, though he mistreats her time and again. One Direction obviously were massive at the time, and these good girl bad boy stories are typically a hit on fan fiction sites, especially so when the relationship turmoil is dialed to an 11, so it's not necessarily surprising that After Stories became a sensation. The Atlantic wrote about After. By the time Todd wrote chapter 90 of an eventual 295 chapters, her novel in progress had been read more than 1 million times. 
Multiple literary agents reached out to her, but she dismissed them as crazy people, figuring no legitimate professional would seek out One Direction fan fiction. The novels have been criticized for their writing style, with some critics saying the novels were just badly written fan fiction, and others claiming the stories lack much of a plot. And while researching, I came across a Reddit thread called Why I Think After by Anna Todd is Dangerous, and the original poster made some similar points, and they also stated they were hoping that kids and teens weren't reading that work of fiction and then wanting to date someone like this portrayal of Harry or Harden. And I do think that's the part of the conversation that intrigues me the most and made me want to make this video, which is where is the line, so to speak, with fan fictions like this? Because on one hand, you can say it's purely fiction and people shouldn't believe everything they read, especially if it's found on a fan fiction site. But on the other hand, we know too well that some people do believe what they read, especially younger people. And if the story's fiction anyway, why include any version of Harry or any other real person in it? One reason I'm assuming this is done is because a fan fiction written about someone with a large fan base will often draw more eyes, especially a lot quicker than a completely original work. And honestly, I do think this can be done in ways that likely wouldn't be damaging to any real people involved. Like, what if this person joined this band? If they went on this tour? What if they lived in an AU where they had these jobs instead? And apparently, it's also relatively popular for fans to write an entire fictional narrative of the music videos that some of these artists release. But then when it gets to something like the After series, maybe portraying Harry Styles as this mercurial, jealous womanizer on a nonlinear redemption arc, is that purely harmless? And the After series does fall under a subset of fan fiction called RPF, which stands for Real Person or Real People Fiction. So this would differ from writing, let's say, a Song of Ice and Fire fan fiction or Lord of the Rings fan fiction, for example. And typically when these fictional characters do interact with people in the real world, so to speak, it's just the author themselves who, of course, is consenting to be in the story that they're writing. In another example, other than after, last year when I was talking about Billboard sleeper hits, I mentioned Glass Animals Heat Waves getting a boost on the charts because its popularity was helped by a fanfic about the Minecraft YouTuber's dream and George Not Found. And like I mentioned earlier, there are multiple reasons that both readers and writers engage in this type of fanfiction. It can be fun to imagine your fave in different scenarios and get to explore them, orchestrate them, or even just read them. And it's often seen as an extension of fandom, so it's just like consuming more content that's related to that person in a way. And often there is a parasocial element to it, of course, feeling like you're closer to the subject after reading some of this fan fiction, even though it's very much just that. And I found that some authors have said that they do extensive research on the real people they write about, making sure they're writing in a way that that person would actually speak or giving the mannerisms that they have in real life. And in other cases, some authors do just take it and run with it, building their fan fiction around fantasies and ideals of that person rather than how they really are, well, at least publicly. And sometimes authors write these fan fictions to create representation in a sense where it may not exist in their or the subject's real life. And this can manifest itself in ways such as giving the subject of their fanfic a different sexuality or dating preferences than what they've expressed or making them of a different socioeconomic class. And sometimes this has less to do with creating representation or exploring some things in your own life, but just feeding into an existing ship of two artists, actors, idols, what have you. An RPF writer named Oda, who writes about the Korean hip-hop scene, spoke to Teen Vogue about the reason they write this fiction, saying, In a way, it's sort of an extension of that parasocial relationship, so I identify with these artists because of their lyrics, and RPF is the way I sort of pick that apart. Like, I know what I write isn't the reality of these people, but their public personas have become a way to explore complex emotional issues through writing. And though not every RPF author writes with bad or libelous intentions, it is still a controversial subsection of fanfiction and of fandom in general. Because while the authors are writing about public figures and not really claiming any of their writing to be fact, the ethics of it do still come into question. Especially when it comes to writing erotic fiction about a real person, having them commit crimes, or just being an awful person in ways there's no real evidence for. And perusing through a separate Reddit thread, I found opinions ranging from, it's okay as long as you don't send the fanfic to the subject, include any of their non-famous family or friends, or market it as true, to it's only acceptable if the person has long since been deceased because then it's more like a historical fiction. And then yet another person said they weren't bothered by it because they treat those subjects, though they are technically real people, as nothing more than characters in terms of the story that they're reading. And even outside of that thread, while reading even more opinions on the matter, I read so many, both from readers and writers, it was brought up quite a few times that real person fiction is not as bad as tabloids because the author's not publishing these unfounded scenarios as fact, and nine times out of ten, far less people will read their story than a tabloid. 
Several made a similar case with unauthorized biopics, saying that separate from those movies, the fan fiction that they write are often so far from the subject's own life that one couldn't logically think that they were writing anything intended to be a portrayal of that person's actual life. And going back to the idea of you, and more so after because he was outright named in those series, I was curious to see if Harry Styles himself said anything about either of those stories. But from what I could find, all he's really said of it was back in March, and Harry said, I don't really know. I don't know if I can confirm. I'm not entirely educated on the origin of the script or anything. I've heard of it, yeah. But I don't know in terms of, I'm not really sure. And this was in response to being asked about after. And those in the camp of finding the stories unethical claim that works like the After series were a defamation suit waiting to happen or that Harry should take out a restraining order against Anna Todd. Where did you come up with the idea for this series? I basically put everything I've ever loved, like Pride and Prejudice, Wuthering Heights, Vampire Diaries, even Cruel Intentions, Fifty Shades, like everything, Twilight, everything I've loved. I just like dumped it in a bowl and stirred it basically. Anna herself has said that Harry was more like a muse for the character in the early days than for the entire series. And she said in 2019, It's not that I don't want to meet Harry Styles. I feel like it's maybe if I met him before this, but now it's like the story has kind of evolved from that. So I would feel like it would be weird to be like, Hey, Harry, want to meet me? I wrote seven books about you. So I just have it like he was a muse or something, and I will always have a appreciation for him being a muse for my writing, but I would never just like step into his life and try to meet him. She said that she was sure Harry was aware the books existed, which he said that he is, but she wouldn't have gone through with publishing them if she thought that he would be against it. And when it came to casting Harden, she claimed she didn't want to go for an actor who was a spitting image of Harry Styles. Hero Finds Tiffin, who played Harden Scott, also said that he didn't model his performance after Harry Styles or One Direction. And he also said in 2021 that he met Harry briefly at the 2019 Met Gala and they exchanged sort of a knowing look. And while they didn't talk about the movie, Hero said that he would be open to talking to Harry about it in the future. And one person I do remember actually speaking out about being harmed by the fan fictions written about her was Lauren Hereggi, who was constantly shipped with her bandmate Camila Cabello. There were several unfounded rumors, theories, and threads that they were secretly together while in Fifth Harmony. And back in 2020, Lauren said it was especially uncomfortable for her because she was queer and to her knowledge, Camila wasn't. And Lauren went on to say that the way that she was portrayed in a lot of these fanfics was even more hurtful because she was often portrayed as predatory. And Lauren said, It made me feel like a predator because of the types of clips that people would put together and the types of stories that people would write and that type of stuff. I was always the aggressor and I was always the one turning her and I was always the one who was like the masculine energy in this scenario. And it made me very uncomfortable because it's not how I identify. And that's not to say that that's wrong to identify like that, but I did not identify that way. And I also did not have that connection with her. Because it's weird because like you're a character for them. Right. So when you're reading it, you're like, this ain't me, but like, it's me. Right. It's weird. But do you like that? I mean, is it? No. No, you don't like <laughs> that. No, you don't like Some of the writers are really talented, but uh, I mean, that's a huge honor to be a part of someone's fandom. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And, you know, people use your character in particular ways, but you can't really help what people do, I guess. And Lauren has said as a result of these rumors and stories that she now hyper analyzes every conversation she has with a girl. I was really intrigued to see if any legal action has ever been taken over any of this real person fan fiction. And small side note, but to prevent this, some fan fiction sites like fanfiction.net don't allow real person fiction at all on their site. And back in the day, this actually was my side of choice, which could be a reason that I never really connected with or came across a lot of RPF. And some users of the site have speculated that reasons for this or that fanfiction.net wouldn't want any subject of the fanfiction to sue the site, which could lose them sponsors, and otherwise they just don't want the problems and debates that would come from having content like that on their site. But they do, however, allow historical figures to be written about. And while in the fanfiction.net forums reading people's opinions on real person fiction being banned, I found mention of a case that took place from 2008 to 2009 where a blogger had to appear in court because of a story he wrote about the UK girl group Girls Aloud. The 12 page blog story was called Girls Scream Aloud and detailed the group members being kidnapped, tortured, and murdered. And from what I've read, it seems like the author himself was the one committing these acts in the story. This didn't take place in the US, so laws are different, but the author, Darren Walker, was charged under the Obscene Publications Act. And in short, the act exists to strengthen the law for preventing the publication for gain of obscene matter and the publication of things intended for the production of obscene matter. The Crown Prosecution Service, so no one affiliated with Girls Aloud, brought the charges against Darren, claiming that Girls Aloud fans could easily find the story by accident. Darren's representation proved that the story couldn't in fact be found so easily, also claiming. 
It was never his intention to frighten or intimidate the members of Girls Aloud. He had written what he described as an adult celebrity parody and was only meant to be for an audience of like-minded people. As soon as he was aware of the upset and fuss that had been created, he took steps himself to take the article off the website. And because the story, in fact, wasn't easily accessible online, Darren Walker was cleared of his charges and was able to walk free. I was curious to find some public figures who have gone on record about being entertained by the fan fictions about themselves, or at least they read them and just don't find them as harmful. And I wanted to see their reasoning, like if it's because they weren't portrayed negatively or if intimate private things weren't speculated about, something like that. Billie Eilish has admitted to reading fanfic about herself, but this was an Instagram story post, so she didn't elaborate further, so I guess we'll never know what type of fanfic she was reading about herself. Regardless, she didn't seem bothered by it. In an interview, Idol Xander from the group UKISS said it was relatively common for fans to send fanfic they wrote directly to idols, and idols do sometimes read them. He said he and his group members thought they were fun to read just to see what fans came up with, but he did not like reading the smut or the sexual fictions. The, the one that I did not really enjoy was the smut one. Alexander walked in the room where Kevin and Eli was stop, and stop. then Alex was like jealous and blah, blah, blah. I'm like woohoo! And some idols have even gone on record about writing fanfic about real people. For example, BTS's Suga saying that he used to make up stories about a musician and a basketball player he idolized, though he didn't name them. He Chul has admitted to writing fanfics about himself, some of which he posted to his own Instagram account. And some of the fanfics were about himself and Lita, the leader of their group Super Junior. And some of these explore their friendship and time as group members and how opposite their personalities are. And he also wrote one about himself and Hani, one of his co-stars, killing a tiger. And in this story, they're actually siblings, so it's kind of like a silly story, which he said that he wrote because he was stuck in traffic and bored. Though opinions on real person fiction vary, it doesn't seem like this type of content is going to go anywhere anytime soon. And then of course it's also probably in part because it's such an ethical and honestly legal gray area, and in most cases unless the fanfic blows up to the extent of something like After, or the subject isn't being hounded in real life because of these fictional stories like Lauren, the subject and their team probably just think it's best not to draw more attention to the story by pursuing legal action. As always, do let me know your thoughts, your feelings, especially your thoughts and feelings on real person fiction. Whether you're someone who actually reads fan fiction, this type of fan fiction, or if you just watch the video because you were intrigued by the topic, what are your thoughts? Then y'all know, more times than not, I have a question to end with, so today is gonna be no different. So in terms of ethics, I'm not asking like, are they two different things because on paper they definitely are, but just in terms of ethics, morals, how you feel, would you consider something like the idea of you to be different from real person fiction? Because while in terms of the idea of you, the Hayes character was never ever actually named Harry Styles, meant to be Harry Styles, we're supposed to read it and think the person is talking about Harry Styles, even fictionally, it's pretty clear that the character was at least very heavily inspired by Harry Styles. Because when you think about it in media, so many characters are inspired, at least even like a little bit, by some real people. When I was typing this question up, London Tipton came to mind immediately for some reason, and I think she's a good example because we can all look and see okay this girl this character is modeled after Paris Hilton the names are similar but she's never been named as Paris Hilton it's just more of a comedic a parody version of Paris Hilton but I guess my question is is it automatically different just because the original person the source the inspiration wasn't outright named of course in the eyes of the law typically the answer is yes but is it automatically different just because the person isn't outright named just because those inherently do not fall under the definition of fan fiction do you personally consider those things to be different than like a Harry Styles and after that later got changed to Harden I hope that question made sense. It was kind of difficult to write, but yes, like I said, I'm not asking if those two things are technically different because I'm aware that they are, but I'm just asking your opinion on it, your feelings from like an ethical standpoint. So if you would like to provide your answer down below or just talk about anything else discussed in the video, I'm very eager to hear what y'all have to say. As always, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe so that you can stick around for more. And if you'd like to become a channel member and get early access to videos, the link is in the description. Again, thank you so much for watching. I love you all so very much, and we'll see you so very soon. Bye-bye.